I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it is The Wrestling Life. It's episode 326. It's our annual Royal Rumble preview program. It is final week of January of 2023. I'm Ethan. I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about right here on the first and only wrestling podcast. So... Raw had their 30th anniversary episode this week. Did a huge uh, viewership. How or why? I'm not entirely sure. I thought it was a very bad show. <laughs> um, the Royal Rumble is coming up this weekend. They have announced, let's see, 16 men for the match. Mm-hmm. They have announced seven women for the ma- for the <laughs> ma- Rumble match. Interesting. Interesting strategy. We were talking about this off air a little bit. It's like, I don't think you need to announce, you know, 28 of or 29 of their participants. I think last year they announced like (laughs) almost all of them. It's like, well, you don't have to do that. But maybe you would you would think it would be a good idea to announce more than seven women for the match. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to look at it. Uh, I, I just feel like the women's rumble is always uh, cameo city. Um, and somebody, yes. I, think, I think it might've been a clip of, uh, I think I saw a clip of the Lance storm uh, podcast uh, on your, on your website. <laughs> and works uh, better than ambient. Sure. Yeah. Delightful <laughs> guy. I'm sure. Um, uh, but he mentioned basically that he thought the reason that the women were so, quote unquote underrepresented on the show say like there's no there was no Trish or Lita or the Bellas and actually we could talk about the Bellas <laughs> a little bit later but uh or I really yeah. became bigger fan of the Bellas this week I appreciate anyone who is bold enough to say what Nikki <laughs> Bella said while working on a show that is owned by WWE <laughs> um but uh yes uh he Lance's point was well, if you bring out a lot of those women now and then they're also in the Rumble on Saturday, that doesn't mean as much. So you underserved women's wrestling fans on the Monday because you're going to overserve them in all likelihood with returns and cameos in the women's Rumble on Saturday. Okay, but I mean, they do this Rumble every year. And, uh, you know, who are you going to see? You're going to see Molly Holly. You you might see Medusa. You might not, I guess, since she was on Raw. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might see Alita. You might get a Jaqueline. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Kelly you know? Kelly's going to be there. She's there every year now. Right. The legendary um, Summer Rae. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alicia Fox, probably. Good, good bet there, but. I don't know. I, I'm I'm not not excited about this women's rumble match. Um, we can talk about the men's rumble match a little bit more. At least there's a wider variety of uh, potential winners there. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess since it happened first, Raw 30. Um, you watched Raw live. I don't know why you don't you don't you didn't have to. You normally don't. No. You watched Raw live this week. What'd you think? I mean, it wasn't the worst show I've ever seen. I was get there's little things about Raw that you can skip when you're watching on DVR that you can't skip uh, watching live. Um, yes. So I think the show is grading uh, to watch <laughs> live. But I thought, foolishly perhaps, that maybe we were going to shoot a big angle <laughs> with what was likely going to be their largest television audience of the year. And I guess technically they shot an angle at the end of the show, but uh, it was not an angle that uh, I thought was worth watching uh, three hours of Raw uh, on my Monday evening live, unable to fast forward commercials or video packages or 
you know, anytime they cut to Irish fella and Corey Graves at the announce desk. So you're uh, not a fan of uh, what's his name? Kevin Patrick on uh, on commentary. No, like by all means, have him be a backstage guy. Have him be the guy on the panel with Jerry Lawler and Rosenberg because I don't <laughs> watch that. Um, by all means, he seems like a lovely fellow, but lead play by play announcer for three hours. Just just unbearable, just unbearable to listen to this guy. And then Corey yeah. Graves is his partner, who is like the most annoying man on planet Earth. So it's <laughs> not a good combo. It's, it's it's a death lineup for you. Yeah. Uh, Hogan opened the show. They, <laughs> they brought Jimmy Hart out there with them. First face we saw on the 30th anniversary of Raw was Jimmy by God Hart. <laughs> Hogan. Uh... Bit of a mixed reaction, but uh, more positive than I thought he would get in uh, in Philadelphia for that. For that. Well, yeah, and I mean, I'm sure they had the uh, the hair dryer crowd noise ready to drown <laughs> out any booze anyway. So, and they really the, needed it during that LA night segment. <laughs> ugh. So they did a um, their thing all of a sudden like the the i guess they realized about a month ago that uh they're on the road to wrestlemania and we gotta accelerate this Sami Zayn roman reign story mm-hmm. and so all of a sudden after like th- two months of being cool uh roman i guess the, the catalyst was roman and sammy lost a tag match to cena and uh kevin owens and uh roman now does not like Sami Zayn again and uh, so they did a big angle with Sami Zayn, and it took a long time. And Solaskoa almost gave him the Samoan spike to the throat, but Jey Uso saved him. Mm-hmm. And uh, everything is copacetic there for the time being. But apparently, that segment went so long that they cut <laughs> Becky Lynch and Bailey's cage match, which was a talking point for all of the podcasters this week. <laughs> Um, I was looking forward to seeing that match, and uh, instead they just they just shot an angle, which was uh, damage control beat up Becky and left her laying in the cage. Um, it was very important, I suppose, that Hunter and his friends <laughs> had time to uh masturbate in the middle of the ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, and there's there was nothing else we could have cut on this show. Um, <laughs> you know packed to the brim with stars and important moments and big angles. Uh, Nothing else that could have uh, been cut for time. And again, I know that affects it's easier to cut the next segment after something goes long than it is to cut stuff in the third hour and crossover segments when you're going to commercial and all this stuff, whatever I get it. But yeah, it, it, it was not a good look as, uh, as the kids used to say, um, there was no minutes of women's wrestling on this <laughs> on this show. Um, oh, actually, that's not true. There was a Bianca match. I just forgot about it until now. Yes, yeah, she... yeah, it was weird, but that got time. She was she mm-hmm. and Bianca and Sonia in the third hour got like eight minutes. I mean, it wasn't a ton of time, no. but I think they went through a break. No. I will say, <laughs> given what was apparent, apparently this post match beat da- or this beat down was going to be the post match anyway. Yeah, and Becky that was going to win and then get beat down. Yeah, that would have pissed me off. So <laughs> that would have pissed me off more than their match getting cut. So uh, because Becky, if Becky wins a cage match clean and then they just keep feuding, uh, that sucks. That's 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 some Vince stuff. And uh, and I was not a uh, so I at, given the circumstances, I was OK with what they did because like I said, it would have made me more irritated if they had done a match and then Becky had won and then they just kept feuding. Um, but yeah, I mean, as, as it stands, it it was obviously, it was noticeable and it's it's not something that if you thought of Becky Lynch still as your number one top female superstar in your company, 
Um, I don't think that would happen. You know, like, yeah, it's easiest to cut the next segment to make sure everybody's still on time. I get that. But let's say if uh, if John Cena was in that segment, do you think his segment's getting cut short? Because, well, he was the next segment up. So it's easiest to cut around him. Or do you think they would cut something in the third hour? Right. They would cut something in the third. Right. They didn't cut. They didn't cut DX's shtick short. They didn't cut the Undertaker barely being able to <laughs> drive a motorcycle around ringside for ten minutes. They cut yes Becky and Bailey's match. So yeah, I'd be a little bit irritated if I were them. But as a fan watching the show, you know, <laughs> uh, maybe they can have a bet a longer match. Maybe they can get like 20, 25 minutes on next week's raw or something, you know, that half, half, half as many people will be watching. Yeah. All right. Well, we didn't really say who do you think is going to win the the women's rumble (laughs) or are we getting to that? We're getting to that. We'll talk about the Royal rumble here. All right. (laughs) There's there's uh here are the matches announced for this for this program. Bianca Belair versus Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's title. Uh Alexa's a placeholder, Bianca's gonna win it, gonna keep the title. Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens. Kevin for the Undisputed Universal Championship. Uh Kevin Owens is a placeholder. Roman Reigns is gonna keep the title. Bray Wyatt versus LA Knight in the Mountain Dew pitch black match. Are you excited for this? Um, um, no, I. Uh, if you were to design in a lab a match that would represent just every single thing I hate <laughs> about the World Wrestling Federation in 2023, it would be this match. Who's in it? The hackneyed corporate sponsorship the under explaining of why you're even calling it that other than that it's sponsored by this soft drink, everything about it. Terrible. Bray Wyatt's involved. All of it. Bad. Fair enough. What do you think uh, undertaker whispered to Bray Wyatt, by the way? Uh, something about States rights or uh, blue lives matter. Maybe. I don't know. Um, that's low hanging fruit. Uh, I I don't right. know. Is he gonna is he gonna gift him the urn or something? What's what's the loriest thing that Undertaker could could gift or could uh, give to Bray Wyatt to power him up for his magic? The urn, right? It'd be like Hogan giving Abyss his WWE Hall of Fame ring. Yeah. Yeah, everyone remembers. It's it's sure. been more than 10 years, so people will like that callback. They love callbacks to things, even if they were bad, if it's more than 10 years ago. That's right. All right, Women's Rumble. Here's who's announced. Liv Morgan, Candice LeRae, Rhea Ripley, Raquel Rodriguez, Shayna Baszler, Zelina Vega, and Emma. This is, this is a two-woman race. This is Rhea Ripley or Raquel Rodriguez. I, I guess it should be Rhea because she feels like the one that people would actually care about. Like Raquel still feels very much like a project. Um, and I'm not yeah, or people, yeah, or but a little uh, bit of a lag issue here, and it's uh, creating uh, us talking over one another, but. I agree with uh, yes. Raquel feels more like a a project, and Rhea is a is a uh, more heavily pushed character, and there's more time on Raw, and she has merch and stuff, and uh, Rhea definitely feels like the one that's more ready. Yeah, and that's a match they've surprisingly stayed away from for a good bit of time. I think they were gonna do it last year before Rhea got hurt, but they didn't. Um, so that's actually would be something of a fresh match for Bianca, which she, she definitely needs fresh opponents. So, um, yeah, I think that would be a fine direction. Obviously at some point they've got to pay off. They got to do like Finn and, and Rhea against edge and Beth. Right. So that's still got to be done at some point, which if that's the mania direction for those two, then maybe, 
then maybe you would lean towards Raquel winning. But I, I, I would like, if you're asking who I would do, I would do Rhea because she feels like the only fresh name in there that people care about. Uh, and then on the other hand, I, and also I don't want to see the, <laughs> I don't want to see edge and Finn Balor wrestle ever again. Um, so I would, I would, I would just, just get rid of that. And uh, I would just have Rhea win and face Bianca. Makes sense. Uh, the On the men's side, big Dom Mysterio was announced for the rumble on Thursday this week. So I probably have to work on that after we've done or done recording mm-hmm. here. Uh, carrying cross Braun Strowman, Seamus, Drew McIntyre, Cody Rhodes, Omos, Gunther, Rey Mysterio, Baron Corbin, Bobby Lashley, Seth Rollins, Austin Theory, Ricochet, Santos Escobar, Kofi Kingston announced for the Rumble. I would narrow this down to, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I think we have five serious contenders of of those announced. Uh, Austin Theory. Uh, Seth Rollins, just because he's Seth Rollins, mm-hmm. Bob Lashley, Cody Rhodes, Drew McIntyre. I think those are your five choices. Do I, Have I made any glaring omissions here? Well, he's not announced for the match yet, but Sammy is the other one, right? He's not announced for the match yet, so uh, I think he can get into a title match without winning a Royal Rumble. That's fair. It's it's uh it's elimination chamber. That's the Montreal show, right? Yeah, and also they have. It's difficult to handicap this, not knowing whether or not they're going to suddenly split the two world titles and have them start defending them separately again, as they just did one randomly one week with the Raw and SmackDown <laughs> tag titles. <laughs> it's like is okay. Roman is defending both titles in his match on Sunday. Is he all of a sudden going to start defending them one at a time, um, you know, beginning in February or whatever? We don't know. We don't know. They've underexplained this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, so, uh, yeah, given those choices, I think it should be Cody. Um, just because he, again, is the freshest name there. They obviously have a story to tell, even if he doesn't go on to win the belt right away at Mania. There's a story there from the night he came back that he's telling about how he's going to win the WWF championship because his father never did. And, you know, he wants to he wants to be the world champion. He wants to be a world champion for the first time because NWA and ROH don't count. (laughs) Um, So but if he doesn't win, though, he's Lex Luger, right? Pretty much like I I think that's another reason to put him over like and like they this they didn't do the return on the raw before like they did. But everything leading up to this, just they announced him whatever three weeks ago now that he was going to be in the rumble. They've been doing yeah. these return vignettes like they're doing the Triple H O2 rumble uh, yes. build, seemingly and Triple H is the guy in charge allegedly. Yes. Uh, yes. So you would think if that's the case, well, we know what the decision has to be, because if he comes back after all these inf- inspirational training montages and then he just gets dumped out by Dom Mysterio or Killian Cross or some Carrion Cross or somebody, uh, mm-hmm. then then he's then he's a geek. So you have to I think he has to win again. I don't think you have to pull the trigger and have him win one or both belts at mania you can still tell a longer story of his quest to win if you want but i think in the immediate he's got to come back and win the rumble and you know as you said the other names are possible nate are possible just because they are guys who are generally pushed very hard on tv there was a weird espn article that just popped up today about boy austin theory is just great and everybody thinks so um so they you know, they think very highly of him. As you said, Seth and Drew are guys who are always going to be around that level. Um, 
But yeah, I think I think the easy and slam dunk answer to this is Cody winning. We'll see if they agree. And we'll see if uh if uh Vince makes any calls on the day of the show and says, Hey Paul, uh what do you think about so and so going over here? <laughs> what do you think about Omas? <laughs> he's he's in the rumble. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's definitely in the rumble. To your point about Lashley, uh, remember like six months ago on a random <laughs> pay-per-view, I think he wrestled Omas and won. And then the ref starts yelling at him like, get the belt, get the belt. And he has yes. to go out in the crowd and grab like a replica championship to hold up. I'm like, oh, he's calling his shot. He, he wants the next shot at Roman. And then they just never followed up on that. Yeah, well, that was before Vince fell off a cliff. Sure, but even then the plan was Brock and Roman at SummerSlam. So it was like, was that going to be a Saudi show in the fall? Was that going to be, was that originally the Rumble match? Like, I, I'm just fascinated that they haven't really made any attempt to, to get to even like tease a Roman and Bob match because that feels like one of the bigger matches they could do with two full time guys at this point. At the end of last year, they did start uh, trying to heat Bob up. They did a they did an angle where he got fired by Adam Pierce, and then they immediately rescinded it like on YouTube or social media or something mm-hmm. the day after the show. And uh, Bob has been in main events um, here on Raw this last month. He beat Seth Rollins, and then uh, he lost to Theory after Brock Lesnar distracted him. Um, I guess Brock and Bob is... I don't know if Brock's in the Rumble or if that's a match for Mania or what exactly is going on with Bob and Brock. But, uh, yeah, Brock coming back was... uh, I guess I should have expected it. I mean, I expected it. I expected it the day of the show when I read that he's going to be on the show. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> ah, yes. I was not surprised at the end of the program when he came out, but uh, I like I don't I don't see where he fits into 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 this uh, Royal Rumble WrestleMania story. But I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's one of those things where. You could do you've never done him and him versus Drew in front of fans. Drew will need a mania yeah. match. So you could put Brock with him. You, they've done Brock versus Seth a lot. They've done Brock versus Bob a couple of times, but not at a WrestleMania. So I mean, yeah, it's a short list of guys, and you know, Brock doesn't that Brock doesn't leave the ranch for just anybody. Um, so you have to, right. I would, I, yes, you would think that it's a short list of Lashley or, or drew again, or I, I can't really think of a third name that he would care about. Like he's done. He, I don't think we're getting work great Brock anymore. Like, I don't think he's going to come out to wrestle Finn <laughs> or Finn or somebody again. Like, I don't, I don't think that, uh, that's going to happen. Yeah. So. What like, about, uh, what about, uh, Killing Cross, as you call them. <laughs> that dude's been Was on TV it? for six months, and I can't remember his name. It's a better name than Carrying Cross. Killing <laughs> Cross. I mean, they already named Nikki 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 Cross's husband to Killian, or else, and they're they. Whatever happened to Saturday coming back? By the way, Eric Young signed, and Nikki Cross is doing teases for it, and then they just never did anything. But Killing Cross, better name than Carrying Cross. <laughs> Uh, in relation to sanity, maybe maybe there's a is is, is big demo. Does he does he have a visa currently? I know he worked dynamite once, but a rampage or something. Good question, but, but I don't know. What, I don't know if he's been in the states lately. So maybe that's put a. I mean, if he's married to Nikki, I would, and they, I would assume they live here. But if he's here on any kind of work visa, then I would assume he. If still she's has not to a citizen, back. yeah, yeah. If she's not a to... citizen, he would probably still need a visa and. You would probably need a visa at the start of the year, right? So, so that would, uh, yeah, so, that would so make maybe, sense. Maybe that's put a cramp in the uh, the big sanity return. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It just, it just seems like a short list. God, carrying Cross and Brock. Actually, that might be amazing because <laughs> I think Brock would just look at that guy and just tear him apart. <laughs> <laughs> or it would be like the Jinder Mahal thing, and like two weeks out, he'd go. Nah, give me somebody else. I don't want to wrestle him. <laughs> if 
<laughs> There's no way Brock's wrestling Killian Cross, which is <laughs> I just brought it up because I wanted to get your reaction. It's like, yeah, you're exactly right. He would look at that guy and be like, uh, nah, nah. All right. Uh, speaking of, I guess that's so that's Royal Rumble this weekend. That's uh, that's a happening. So Charlotte's on not a in much... the Charlotte's not in the Rumble or having a title match, huh? As of now, well, well, they haven't announced. I don't know why she would be in the Rumble if she's a champion, but they I, they've probably done that before. I think I think last year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hey, maybe they're going to announce 23 people on SmackDown <laughs> on Friday. I assume we're getting a ton of NXT people in the, in the Rumble again. Remember, like last year's, like Vince was like, no, no NXT people. And they brought back like uh, Cameron from the Funkadactyls. Mm-hmm. It was incredible. It was like, that's one of the worst Rumbles of all time uh, <laughs> from, from memory. Uh, but yes, there was a lot of. A lot of early 2010s diva eras, uh, divas era talent in that rumble. Yeah. Um, let me see if we can figure out. Who, okay. Who was in the, in the women's rumble last year? Uh, Sasha Banks, number one. Mm-hmm. Shocking. Melina. <laughs> Bret Hart and Mick Foley's favorite wrestler. That's right. She was in uh, for 53 seconds. <laughs> Oh, that's that's the uh, the uh, when Sasha throws her out and then does a split. I remember that. It's a memorable uh, angle. Mm-hmm. Tamina, <laughs> Kelly, Kelly, <laughs> Aaliyah, Liv, Zelina, Bianca, Dana Brooke, Michelle McCool, and Sonya Deville. Mm. Natty, I don't think Natty's uh, in the Rumble this year. I, I think she's out. I saw some vague, vague tweeting from her about like not being appreciated or something this week. I think she's she's hurt though. Like she ah. could, she had to get she had to get her face. <laughs> she broke her face mm-hmm. and then they had to put her face back together. Um, yeah, but maybe she's doing her own angle there. I don't know. Um, Naomi, Carmella, Rhea Ripley, Charlotte, Ivory, and Brie Bella. <laughs> Mickey James, Mickey by God James. Mm-hmm. She could be in it again. Sure. Yeah. Alicia, Alicia Fox, uh, Nikki A.S.H., Summer Ray. I don't remember Summer being in the Rumble last year. Oh, yes, I do. Because she she was like mouthing the F word on her head. She screamed F you at the top <laughs> of her lungs as she sprinted into <laughs> the ring. She was only in for 52 seconds. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nikki Bella was in. Uh, Sarah Logan was in. Lita was in. I don't remember Lita being in last year's Rumble. Uh, Molly Holly was in. Rondi, Rondi, Rondi Rousa was in. <laughs> also a Rondi better name. Rousa. Yes. What's, uh, she's gone. She's just, uh, she went home. <laughs> Seems that way, right? Yeah. And uh, it's probably for the best. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm old, uh, what shot- were we going to get? Another match with her and Charlotte? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I believe we were. <laughs> yeah, so there were no NXT people in last year is the, is the long and short of this. Um, all right, well, that's the uh, the Royal Rumble. We've uh, beat that to death now. Um, let's see, AEW this week. They were able to do their Jay Briscoe tribute show. Um, I guess we should we didn't do a show last week, so I should ask um, any thoughts on the passing of Jay Briscoe? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I I, uh, I I would not classify myself as like the biggest Briscoes fan of all time, but I always enjoyed them as a team. You know, we saw them wrestling in the, the Dew Burns arena when that was Ring of Honor's uh, home base for tapings for a while. Um, we, uh, you know, so I've, you know, I've seen them wrestle live. I've seen, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of Briscoe's matches. I enjoyed, uh, their matches with FTR this past year, uh, quite a bit. Um, so I'm certainly not an expert on his, 
in ring career, but I've always, you know, he's always been, they both have been, it's hard to talk about one because they seem so joined at the hip, but obviously Mark is not, it's not dead. Only Jay is. Um, so it, it was very sad uh, looking around. There didn't seem to be too many guys who were more beloved uh, in that ring of honor locker room. And uh, you know, those, those tentacles reach far. You saw, you know, people in WWE, of course, a ton of people in AEW, people in Impact, people in pretty much every area, you know, fellow wrestlers, people who were bookers for, for Ring of Honor over the years. Um, and also just the fact that, I mean, J- Jay Briscoe is in the first ever Ring of Honor match. And, you know, as of now, he was in the main event of their last pay-per-view. So it's, you know, he's he is Mr. ROH. He's the eternal. He's been the, you know, the the constant um obviously the the cloud that hung over and uh that has been kind of talked to to death is that the you know the the homophobic tweets which i am certainly not excusing that were made in in uh in the late or the early 2010s uh not only (laughs) cost him a job with wwe in the immediate and in the long term cost him jobs with wwe and aew um you know, the Young Bucks talked on, on BTE this week about how they desperately wanted the Briscoes in there. They said when they were starting AEW, they told Tony that they needed they needed the Lucha Brothers and they needed the Briscoes. And that was how they were going to build the tag team division was with the, the three best brother tag teams of all time. Um, and uh, and obviously that couldn't happen. Uh, I do think to his credit, he did apologize multiple times and and give like a detailed apology where he explained kind of what his thought process at the time was and, and why he doesn't feel that way anymore. And there were a lot of, you know, there, not a lot, I should say there was, there was a few, you know, gay and and trans wrestlers who had worked with him on the Indies over the last couple of years, who spoke very highly of him and said he was a very welcoming presence. So um, I know Ian Riccoboni had kind of a long thread uh, going over why he believed Jay, you know, Jay, Jay was something of a changed man in the, in his later life. So, um, but even if you didn't want to accept that apology or you didn't believe him to be sincere, um, you know, he was still a dad and there's, you know, kids without a dad now and wife without a husband. They, you know, if you ever watched a Ring of Honor show and you saw the Briscoe family, it was not two or three people. They, you know, between all the cousins and nephews and grandparents and everything, they, they was a big flock and he was a big part of it and he was a big part of his community. So, yeah, by all accounts, it was just very sad. Um, it, it really it really shook me up when I heard heard about it. Um, like I said, even not being a huge Briscoes fan, but uh, it w- it was very sad. And I think if if for no other reason than for uh, locker room morale, if that's the right word for it, it is good that they got to do a proper tribute to him and that all of these people that knew and loved him got to, you know, to pay tribute to him on a very large stage. And, uh, you know, it's a shame that it took a sudden and violent death to get to a point where Mark Briscoe could wrestle on, uh, on dynamite. But, um, it was very emotional and it was very moving. So I'm I'm glad it happened. But the the reason for why it's happened uh, has certainly it makes it doesn't make it a happy occasion. Uh, it was it was quite sad. But I'm I'm glad if if this helps the people that knew him, especially his family, uh, get some closure. Then 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 I'm I'm glad for it. But it's uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. I've I've been rambling for like five minutes now. It's that's fine um yeah so mark uh mark got his match on dynamite this week and uh they allowed a tribute to jay on the show and considering that this commitment uh at this point that everyone and their mother made but you know they're airing dana white's power slap immediately following dynamite and uh dana white was caught on video slapping his wife mm-hmm beginning of this year and uh yep they got no they got no issue airing that but i mean has anyone ever paid more for a tweet than jay <laughs> and look 
there's consequences to actions, right? And yes. it's like, and even even if it's just ignorance, and that's not, it wasn't like a well thought out, um viewpoint or opinion that he held about uh, whether or not gay people should be allowed to marry that's whatever but there's consequences even for ignorance it's like but has anyone ever paid more for a tweet uh not that i can think of uh especially not when that someone goes out of their way to repeatedly apologize i mean especially i mean just in wrestling alone but in the entertainment industry <laughs> You know, right. Mel Gibson gets to make family comedies with Will Ferrell. <laughs> like, right. seems to be a very low bar for letting, uh, you know, for letting somebody back in back into the club, so to speak. But uh, it was it was a big issue. And again, I don't want to hand wave and say he didn't deserve criticism or even punishment at the time. But uh, right. But it, yeah. But I think it's it is frustrating when you when you read about you know, people's people who knew him and his testimony of how he, you know, bettered himself and apologized again repeatedly and gave pretty detailed explanations of why his thought process had changed on on that stuff that, um, yeah, it sucked that it took the guy dying for his brother who didn't do <laughs> who didn't tweet anything to my knowledge. Right. Um, to to get on TV to to celebrate his life and for all of his friends and and, uh, you know, uh, to to get to come out on stage when and and cheer for him and they I I did not get a chance to watch they put up the I think it's like a three hour tribute show that's on the ROH YouTube channel and Honor Club that's a mix of like a, it's a compilation of Jay's matches and then some new stuff that they shot after Dynamite last week um, I'm sure that's that's very moving as well I'm but it is nice that that's it doesn't have to just live like hidden away on YouTube that they got to pay proper tribute on the show that a million people watch every week is, uh, is good. And I'm, I'm glad they had that opportunity. It's just a shame of what it took to get us there. In classic AEW fashion, they put it up on YouTube on Wednesday night and uh, then they made the video private. So mm -hmm. like, Places where we're like, okay, the uh, the J the Jay Briscoe tribute show is now available. Here's a post, and we'll embed the video in the post, and then the video was made private, and then uh, and then I guess it was re released on Thursday. And uh, but that company has no idea what they're doing. They have no idea what they're doing. Well, in that case, that's like it's Jeff. What's his name? Front in there. I don't know. Does he do the YouTube stuff too? Because it's yeah, it just sounds like. PM and AM got switched up. <laughs> Jeff, um, Jeff, I don't think Jeff does. I don't think Jeff does the uh, Jeff follows me. I should be careful what I say about Jeff. Okay. I think I, I met Jeff once in person <laughs> and we just no sold each other too, by the way. Oh, cool. <laughs> Love that. Love that for you. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Anyway, um, as far as AEW Dynamite. So the last two weeks, just as a show, um, uh, they're in one of their stretches where they don't have a pay-per-view for a while. They still have what, like six or seven weeks before their next pay-per-view mm -hmm. kind of an in-between cycle. I don't think the shows have been bad. It just feels like people seem to like the shows and you get, a, you get, you've gotten a long Brian Danielson singles match on TV, like six weeks in a row now. So like how bad can the shows be? Mm -hmm. But it just doesn't feel like a whole lot happens on the, on the shows. Darby's gotten a, a TNT title defense a few weeks in a row now. Uh, but um, yeah, again, maybe I'm in the minority here. People seem to like the shows. I just don't think they've been very eventful over the last month or so. Yeah, it's been a lot of good wrestling to your point. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as the, the storyline development is a little bit slow. They're Next week's dynamite is kind of loaded up. They got Hangman and Moxley again. They've got Joe and Darby in a rematch, and uh, and and that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's like uh, MJF and Brian Danison have started a feud, which will go to the pay per view. But we're still a while out, so we're kind of just starting to get some steam behind that. And then it's like the tag team right. champions are doing. 
are doing comedy with the ass boys. Um, which right. maybe that maybe that'll be a pay per view match. I don't know, but um, doesn't feel that that like does it feels like a TV program certainly. Um, yeah, Jamie Hader is the women's champion, and she's not the focal point of <laughs> a storyline at the moment. The storyline is I, about haven't seen her in a while. Yeah, she's on Rampage the this week uh, wrestling Emmy Sakura, so <laughs> probably probably be a very good match. But uh, but yeah. As a, uh, she doesn't have a, a clear opponent being set up. Maybe it's Tony Storm since she uh, has won a couple of weeks in a row on Dynamite here. But uh, oh wait, no, she lost. To, she lost her. Mm-hmm. Never mind. Um, you, you know what? I, you know what I'm mad about? They've randomly just turned Tony Storm heel. She had to turn decided... heel because Soraya was a bad promo. <laughs> right. It's like they've decided they're going to do homegrown versus uh, out, outside free agents that they've signed. And so as their homegrown talent, they count Britt Baker and Jamie Hader and probably uh, Shida, Karu mm-hmm. Shida. She would have to like, I don't think they don't care about faces or heels as much. I think they just, you know, Shida could align with Britt for a while without like turning heel or anything but in this in this feud that they're setting up which maybe is leading to blood and guts i'm not sure but (laughs) sheeta baker hater and maybe ruby are going to be lined against or willow uh, are going to be aligned against tony soraya uh maybe ruby and uh, maybe they'll, they'll get another at some point. But I, I do not like that feud at all. <laughs> Makes me mad. It's like, yes, Tony Storm can be a heel, but why? <laughs> why are we swimming swimming upstream? Well, because Saray is going to be a heel and can only bump once every eight weeks or she'll die. <laughs> um, and so you need somebody to bump. <laughs> The, the other seven weeks. I mean that. Uh, no, I, I, I mean, suppose. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. That's being the somewhat, reason. Yeah, you know, somewhat facetious <laughs> here, but it's, it's, yeah, it's Soraya's baby face run was, uh, was getting uh, tempered reactions, shall we say? <laughs> and so they turned her, and she's not going to wrestle every week. So, or apparently even be on the show every week. Um. So yeah, they're gonna they're gonna do this. It does feel like it would make sense for Ruby to turn and be part of the WWE women, but also yeah. Willow is newer to the company than than Ruby. So and she, I mean, yeah, she didn't work for WWE. But if it's just people that weren't there from the start, quote unquote, you know giving that some like liberal terms because Jamie Hader worked like dark twice in 2019 or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, like you can, uh, you can, you can make that work, but yeah, Willow, I mean, she's other than she's a baby face and people like her, which is fine, but she doesn't really fit into the, she doesn't fit in as an outsider coming in to take somebody's spot and, and talk down to the originals, nor does she really fit the spot of like a, a defend defending her home turf AEW original. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the finish to uh, Tony Storm and Ruby Soho on TV this week was uh, Britt Baker. <laughs> Britt Baker was the finish. <laughs> well, she, was well, she was supposed to be in the match and then got taken right. out very suddenly. Um, yeah, and uh, and and then they, uh, but they still she may or may not be hurt. Mm-hmm. And uh, and but still had to still had to do the entrance. And again, it's funny to do a. I guess it's like, is there some sort of ironic uh, galaxy brain poetry here that the WWE woman got the music distraction roll up finish, or it wasn't a roll up Ruby hitter finish, but. The musical distraction leads to the finish, and the WWE woman gets pinned. Even though I, again, I don't necessarily think it's fair to call <laughs> to call Tony a WWE woman because that was like eighteen months of her or two years of her career, 
you know, as, when she's been wrestling for a right. long time and she hated it by all accounts. Yes. Um, but that's again, that's that's her lot in life because she stood next to Soraya. So she's got to. Yes, she's got to be on that side. It's <laughs> poor Tony. She has the worst luck. <laughs> I think I think it's fair to say she has the worst luck. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, I think that's all we have here. Uh, so uh, you excited about the Rumble? I mean, in in the general sense that our Royal <laughs> Rumbles are hard to not be fun when you're watching them live. Yes. Yeah. Like it's it's hard to have a bad time again. Those rumbles last year were bad. I do I do remember that, but uh, uh, but it's hard again in the moment when you're you're doing the countdown every ninety seconds. It's hard to have a bad time. You know, you're if you're watching the match and you're enjoying it and you're you know you're checking Twitter and people are saying funny things and whatever. It's 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 always a good time. I can. It's very hard to have a bad time watching a Royal Rumble, even a subpar one. So. In that case, yeah, I uh, I am excited, and uh, you know, if it's bad, well, at least it'll also probably be five hours long. <laughs> yes, there's that too. Happy birthday to you, pal! Big three zero. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's it's happening. <laughs> I uh, yeah. it's I'm uh, like like uh, like we uh, we said off the air. I am. Uh, I'm not upset, but I have been I have been considering my mortality. <laughs> so I am uh, I'm appreciative of the birthday wishes and the cakes and and any gifts I may receive and any celebrations I may take part in. But uh, the actual turning 30 part of it, not a huge fan. But, uh, you know, it's just just how life goes, you know. Happy birthday to uh, Mercedes Monet. Big three one, and uh, happy birthday to Becky Lynch. Birthday is coming up on Monday. Big, uh, big three six, I believe. I didn't realize she was that uh, that much older than the other. I think actually, I think she and Charlotte are similar ages, and then it's Bailey and Sasha who are a bit younger, right? Yes. Um... I know off the top of my head, Sasha just turned 31 today. Uh, Becky is, in fact, turning 36. Charlotte, I think it might be 37. Um, This is fast. This is great pod, by the way. Charlotte (laughs) is 36. Charlotte will be 37 in at some point this year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. On April, April fifth, naturally, and Bailey, I think, is thirty three, and will be thirty four in like June. Um, Bailey is thirty three and will be thirty four in June. So there we go. All right. Well, happy birthday to Mercedes and Becky, and happy early birthday to Charlotte, <laughs> Charlotte and Bailey. I guess. I'm sorry. I don't know where I took this. Where I took this show. I just, I can't help but be weird. <laughs> hey, sometimes when you're steering, you just you, you you take down a you take us down a side road you didn't you didn't expect and you get a little lost. But you know, we always find a destination in the end. <laughs> so, thanks, thanks for putting a bow on that. And until next time, everyone, I'm Ethan and I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Happy birthday! Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. We human, those of us with peculiar appetites for the diverse and the bizarre... Even those of us who have shown an aptitude to fight the good fight and stay the good long battle, even those of us can get tired. And your boy is tired after 30 consecutive nights. I have a half hour to go, and I'm going to do that half hour because I'm a pro, and that's what pros do. I'm a professional. Look it up in the book. (laughs) That's what we do. We're pros. We're never rude, and we don't cop out. 
We don't tell you that we're ill or that we're looking for the farmhouse in the middle of a desert or that we're parched. We don't tell you that maybe the check didn't come through this month. And where the hell does it go anyway if you're a guy who's left 16 forwarding addresses? So what do you do? What's the answer? Yeah, you're a little perturbed now. Kind of worried about the club. (laughs) Don't worry about the club. Worry about maybe Jackie, my... (laughs) Nah, don't worry. Okay, just cool it. Life is a breeze. Of course, some breezes, you know, at 110 miles per hour, and get promoted up to hurricanes. I just thought I'd pass that along. Speaking of pass along, we're going to pass along now to the newsroom, the mutual newsroom. Hi, Tom, the old downtown, beautiful downtown studios of Arlington, Virginia. Washington, D.C., the mutual newsroom will get us up to date on the news headlines and we'll come back with more open phone America and we'll have our salute to my man Duke, the Duker, by taking him to one of his favorite places and one of mine too, the town, Cooperstown, New York. This is the Larry King Show, Washington. We'll be right back. (laughs) R.I.P. God bless. <laughs> Never fail to marvel definitely. at how you can uh, you can just rattle that off. Oh, I'm reading. I'm reading a transcript. I'm not. Oh, don't break the illusion. <laughs> I have a good memory, but it's not that good. Well, I still don't know if I could recite that, even if I was reading it that well. I try to keep on keeping on.